Imagine this, a society where no one is prone to natural illness, a world where good food is accessible to all at low cost, a place where everyone has the best physical traits available. What does this sound like to you? A fancy story that's purely meant for entertainment? Or a sci-fi world that by no means is possible to achieve with the limiting factors of humanity? Well, while we have all grown accustomed to the idea that something like this is just impossible to attain, what if I told you that the technology to make this happen is already being developed and tested? That's right, what I'm talking about is the technology to engineer life itself being in the palm of humanity's hand. More specifically, this technology will let us edit DNA to exactly our liking. If you guys don't already know, DNA is the manual for how to build the body, and you should also know that RNA is just a molecule that's a complementary match to DNA. In the past, editing DNA has always been seen as something not accessible to the average consumer, as it's very risky and expensive to make changes to the body's master coat. But in the near future, with the power of something called CRISPR, we will be able to bypass almost all of humanity's problems with little to no cost. But before, get, but before we get into that, I'm sure all of you are wondering, what the heck is CRISPR? CRISPR stands for Clustered, Regularly Interspaced, Short, Palindromic DNA. This stands, that's Clustered, Regularly Interspaced, Short, Palindromic DNA. Okay, so what does that even mean? Well, this just means that there's DNA that's repeated. Along with that, that repeated DNA also exists as a palindrome, which is basically something that's spelled the same way from the front and back. Think of the word race car, for example, which is spelled R-A-C-E-C-A-R. -E -E now, if you were to flip that word, you'd still spell out R-A-C-E-C-A-R. -E with that in mind, the CRISPR system was first discovered in E. coli bacteria, acting as a defense mechanism against viruses. Inside these bacteria existed repeated DNA, and whenever a virus would infect, two proteins would go in to take some of the viral DNA and place it within its own DNA. Having this done is just so that the bacteria remembers if the virus infects again. Once the viral DNA is placed within the repeated DNA, all that DNA goes through a process that allows for the formation of an RNA molecule. This RNA molecule is then further modified with enzymes and the addition of other RNA molecules. The finalized piece of RNA that we get out of this is then attached to a protein, and that protein complex waits inside the bacteria until another virus infects. As soon as the virus infects, the protein complex recognizes it and goes to the virus, locating the part of the viral DNA that matches the complementary RNA that it has. Once it's found the exact match, the protein acts like a pair of scissors, cutting the matching DNA, killing the virus. Okay, so sure, CRISPR can safely protect bacteria from viruses, but how can all that even help us out with our problems? Well, humans are innovative. We've reverse engineered this defense mechanism, and have found a way to trick these proteins into cutting out pieces of DNA that we want to have cut out. Scientists can do this by taking the finalized piece of RNA using the protein complex and slightly modifying it for desired usage. This guide RNA, as we like to call it, specifically tells the protein where it needs to cut out DNA. And we can modify this guide RNA so it matches up precisely to the places where we want to have DNA cut out. This way, once the protein has the right guide, the guide can tell the protein where it has to do its job. Okay, so once the piece of DNA that we want to have cut out gets cut out, now there's a big gap in the DNA. This isn't good because we don't like to have gaps in the literal thing that makes life possible, so the next step of the process is to fix up this gap. One of the ways DNA can be repaired is through homology-directed repair, which is just a safe way for cells to repair, repair the DNA. If done this way, scientists can also add specific desired additions in the cutout location. This is beneficial for us because this means we can add whatever genes we want to the spot where we've just made the cut. In fact, this is a recipe on how we can change life itself. There are a plethora of ways that CRISPR technology with homology-directed repair could impact us all such as through curing diseases that currently don't have an effective cure, like HIV, Alzheimer's, or even cancer. It's like having a magical wand that we can use to wave away all our health problems. Now, even though CRISPR is still being tested, it's already shown results. Sickle cell anemia is a horrible disease that causes red blood cells to turn into scythe-like shapes. This disease is extremely painful, but despite all this, 
Victoria Gray, a young woman suffering from sickle cell anemia, was cured of her complications through the use of CRISPR. Her symptoms started when she was just a child and haunted her to her 30s. But with the use of CRISPR, she had found that all her symptoms had been alleviated, so much so that she hadn't had a hospital visit in nearly two years since she was treated. Now, even though CRISPR is still being tested, it's already shown results. The fact is, even though CRISPR is a magnif magnificent tool that we can use, it also has some drawbacks. One factor in this is, if we genetically change things like sperm or egg cells, how will that affect future generations? Many are arguing that this usage of genetic engineering isn't okay, as you can't get consent from babies that aren't even born yet. There's also the problem of not knowing what the long-term implications of this technology are. CRISPR seems to be very safe and precise, but it can take time for the downsides of new technology to show up. One additional point of controversy is the availability to the common person, and if this technology will only be primarily accessible to the wealthy upper class. While CRISPR has been notable for being far less inexpensive than its counterparts, other factors such as monopolization, for example, could come into play when this technology gets released to the general public. This all adds to the fear of if, if this technology can, increase social, can potentially increase social and economic disparities and make our society less fair and equitable. The truth is, since CRISPR is still relatively new and still being tested, no one really knows what the future will hold, and this just shows that there are good reasons to be optimistic and to be fearful. From my perspective, I believe that this technology has no limit on how it can impact the world, with it being able to do miracles, but the fact that we even have this technology is a chance to show that humans can maturely use revelations, and that we aren't so self-absorbed. The future is now, and it's up to all of us to make responsible decisions with the power at our fingertips. So when you do take your stand on this, please carefully consider the implications and choose wisely.